Oh, all right, so welcome. Um, today we will be reviewing sprints 62 and 63. I took a scan of the team slides and it doesn't actually look like we have anyone new at all, unless anyone knows of someone. And if that is the case, then we get to just scan these slides and we will arrive here um, where Jakob is going to talk about the Q2 milestones. Are you on, Jakob? Yes, Kate, thank you. Sure. So this is a summary of the, the mid-quarter release. Uh, the release the, in, in, was initiated on the April 8th uh, and it was finalized on the May 16th last week. Uh, announcements now go to the releases channel, which was set up for this, uh, starting from this release. It will take over co release uh, related communication from those specific uh, quarterly releases channels that had to be created and destroyed after each release. So that's, that's the place to go if you're interested in release updates. Um, uh, and it's available at, uh, at, the, at the link provided in the, in the, in the slides. Uh, this week, uh, uh, there is a manual testing uh, activity uh, ongoing on that release, uh, the so-called bug fest, and the release is being monitored for uh, scalability issues. Um, uh, 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 next week, uh, or as soon as we uh, as we get the, uh, uh, the first indicators of existing bugs, uh, we will be working on bug fixes and providing them. Uh, uh, providing them uh, uh, on, you know, uh, on the uh, uh, first come, first serve basis, essentially. Um, just a note about this release, uh, that the deadline for the modules for this particular release was the 10th of May, uh, but there were cases in, uh, that some of the modules did not get released on time. Uh, please make sure, uh, and I think it's a, it's a call out to the Scrum Masters and, uh, and, and, and team leads, please make sure that the, the release uh, deadline for the modules is met uh, for the upcoming releases, because that once those release, those deadlines are not met, it puts the whole release timeline timeline at risk. Um, so that's it for the Q2. Kate, could you please switch to the next slide? Uh, I'll just uh, talk briefly about the, uh, the end of the quarter release and then about the mid-quarter, um, uh, Q3 mid-quarter release. So Q2, uh, end of quarter release, uh, the module release deadline for this release is Jul uh, June 12th. Uh, so, uh, actually not far out uh, from now, uh, again, please make sure that the, the module releases are uh, ready by that, uh, by that date. Uh, and then it will uh, be followed by a, a round of manual testing, the, the, the so-called bug fuss from June 17th to June 21st. Uh, the bugs will be triage and there will be a round of bug fixes uh, until June 27th. Uh, the official release date for Q2 is uh, July 1st, and we'll, uh, we'll try to make sure that it gets out on that date. Um, and uh, Kate has provided a link uh, uh, that, where you can see all those functional features that have been scheduled for this release. Uh, Kate, could you please? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, and a uh, couple of uh, dates for the Q3 release. Uh, the mid-quarter Q3 release, uh, uh, we will go ahead with a mid-quarter release for Q3. Uh, it was not, maybe it wasn't clear whether it's going to happen or not, but this, this time uh, we, will, uh, we will go for, again for a mid-quarter release. Um, uh, Again, a module release deadline for this release is July 24th. Uh, that's a pretty essential deadline for all the teams uh, in the folio. Uh, uh, manual testing will take place from 29th to August 2nd. Bugs will be tri uh, triaged and we will have uh, a bug fix uh, window until August 8th. Uh, the, the release date, the planned release date for the mid 
mid Q3 release is planned for August 12th. Um, uh, this uh, release is uh, uh, is expected to be deployed as, at uh, at, um, at one of the early implementers. So it's essential that uh, that uh, that this release is uh, is fully tested and and, and production ready. Um, and I think that's it when it comes to uh, when it comes to updates about the release timeline. If you guys have any questions, please uh, send them to me or on the release releases channel, and I'll be happy to uh, to answer those. Great. Thank you, Jakob. Uh, did we want to give any updates on definition of done? Has anything changed here? I don't think there have been changes. No, there, there has not been many changes. The only maybe update is that obviously we are going to follow the, the, the mid-quarter release uh, cycle uh, for Q3. So that's the main change, I guess, uh, when it comes to um, uh, module releases. Yep. Got it. Okay. All right. So the POs have entered um, the highlights for their teams for the past couple of sprints. So you can view them here in the slides if you'd like. Um, but I am going to take us straight to the demos. And um, we've got Thunder Jep up first um, with Dennis, Alexi, and Peter. Thank you, Kate. Okay, let me stop sharing. <clears throat> and I think Alexi is going to set his screen up to share first. Just a quick introduction to what we're going to show today. We have a very exciting demo for everyone. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of work, both in the back end and the front end, of a number of different modules and acquisitions, um, primarily the back end of the invoices module. And we're not going to show you much from there, but there has been a lot of work happening there. And some of the UI for invoices is, is going to be coming together in, in upcoming sprints. So we should have a bit of a focus there in our next uh, sprint demo. Outside of that, we're going to look at uh, specifically functionality in what we're now calling organizations. So many of you may remember that we've deprecated what was called the vendor uh, vendors module the UI in the back end, and it's been renamed organizations. And we're going to show some specific functionality that was adjusted here to uh, provide, I guess, what was needed by other, other apps in the system, primarily the agreements app moving forward. So we've got some functionality to show for contact people and managing contact people as well as interfaces. And then we're going to uh, move into the orders module and show you some, some of the transition of statuses for orders based on receiving. So it's going to be a, an excellent demo and I'll let Alexi get us started with organizations. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, so let me show you what we have done in organizations app. Uh, earlier, we had already contact people info and interfaces. Uh, it looks uh, pretty similar uh, what we had uh, before, uh, but uh, uh, what uh, we have done, we changed uh, the way uh, of managing uh, these entities. Uh, basically, uh, from view vendor details or organization details, we can go to Edit organization screen, and uh, here we have uh, two new uh, views of interfaces and uh, uh, contact people. Uh, so, uh, regarding contact people, uh, we have implemented uh, add contacts model window. Uh, to manage a list of contacts. Uh, basically, we have a similar search and sort layout, uh, supporting some filtering uh, and uh, filter based status and category uh, of contacts, existing contacts. Uh, so, let me show you the create contact. Uh, I can go. Uh, to create screen by clicking on new button. 
and here we have a uh, create contact uh, screen. So let's put some uh, information to required fields like uh, first name and last name. Uh, we can uh, enter different information. It uh, can show you something uh, similar to what we uh, could enter before, but uh, now uh, we can uh, enter uh, several uh, phones, uh, several addresses, several emails, and check something as primary. Uh, let's save it. We have uh, created contact uh, test. After it, we can return to edit organization uh, screen uh, and uh, through Add contacts model, we can find our created contact. Basically, uh, that's it. We can uh, click save and uh, it's added to our organization. So, uh, let me show you how it looks on. Uh, details. Uh, so uh, here we have our contact of test and delete and the several phone numbers. Uh, we can expand it here and uh, we have one as primary and one alternate. Uh, okay, uh, let's get back to this uh, managing contact uh, thing. Uh, so, by clicking on, on the row in the list of contacts, uh, we can get to view contact screen. Uh, and from uh, there, we have several options like edit. We can go to, um, to edit screen, enter something, and click save. So that's how we edit contact. We can unassign it, or we can even delete it from here. So let's delete it. And uh, contact uh, will be unassigned from organization and uh, deleted. So let's try to find it here. Yeah. Uh, the contact was deleted. Uh, apart from it, uh, we have such feature as assign multiple contacts. So let's select several and click it. Uh, we have a lot of contacts added. Uh, we have an assign function so to unassigned contact uh, people from organization. So we can just uh, click button here, or we, uh, let's click save to save uh, these contacts. So we are able to go directly to this Ryan Zinke contact and uh, to unassign it from here. Information model is appeared and uh, contact is unsigned. Uh, so similar thing we have for interfaces. We have uh, like uh, select more. Uh, we can save them, we can go to uh, one of contact. So we have an unsaved uh, information on edit organization form. So uh, we just click uh, close without saving. So uh, contacts that I've added uh, will be not saved. And on edit, uh, on view uh, interface screen, we can uh, click edit. And uh, here we have uh, one new field 
uh, comparing to a uh, form of interface uh, existed before with type. So we have interface type and uh, basically uh, we can assign multiple types. So let's uh, do it. Click save. Oh, some validation appeared. Uh, so yeah, we have uh, here save types. We can return back uh, and uh, on edit organization form, we can uh, filter by uh, interface type. Here we have our Amazon and uh, one more interfaces with type admin. Can you, can you also, Lexi, just highlight that you can select more and the total will continue to count up for you. So select an interface, run another search or something else. Sure. So I selected two. Uh, I filtered by type admin. Uh, we have only two types and uh, they are not selected. We can select one more and the total selected is three. Uh, but basically I can select Amazon uh, even if it's all uh, selected. It will be selected four, but added only three because we had uh, selected Amazon already. Here we have uh, four interfaces. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, Dennis, please let me know if you want to show me some more. No, that's great, that's great. Uh, so, uh, regarding interfaces, uh, it's the same thing. They will be shown on details one by one, like for interfaces. Uh, uh, I think that's it for me. Thank you for your attention. So let me know if you have any questions. So Alexi, the, the only place right now we can get to the contacts and the interfaces to edit them is here in the organizations app. Is that right? Yep. It's only through edit organization screen and organizations app. Okay. Thank you. Actually, uh, it's a matter of uh, requirements. Uh, we can easily implement this in different uh, or separate application to leverage it's not uh, a big deal since we implemented the, these models as plugins uh, and uh, they could be easily translated to separate application. But uh, if it's uh, it fit, it will be required. And thank you. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Part of the reason why we've gone this direction with uh, contact people and interfaces is to make it make them more accessible to other applications in Folio. Thank you. So now uh, Piotr is going to look at the orders interface with us and first just quickly show some changes to the search for or filter uh, for orders and then talk about statuses. So there was work done on a component for uh, filtering by date, and we've actually implemented that here in orders. So Piotr, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yep, uh, I assume that you already see my screen. And uh, as Dennis mentioned, that uh, there are a few enhancements done uh, to order this application. And uh, for example, uh, a few uh, filtering uh, uh, sections added, and as then it ma mentioned, there is uh, uh, a filter which can filter orders by date ordered range. At the moment, uh, uh, for example, let's uh, filter orders which were created only, uh, not created, but uh, ordered today. So date ordered mean, means uh, that uh, order was uh, tra transited to uh, open status. And uh, once we click apply uh, button, we can see only those which, uh, which were open today. Uh, 
So we can uh, search for more orders. Uh, some of uh, orders from sample data uh, marked with date ordered uh, uh, within the last year. So once we click apply, we can see that uh, much more orders uh, uh, now available. A few more uh, filters like status. It's uh, 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 order level sta status. And if you would like to filter only open statuses, orders, we can see that now uh, 10 orders on the display. The rece receipt status is uh, uh, purchase order line uh, status. So if you would like to, to see orders which have, uh, have uh, purchase order lines with particular receipt status, we can do this by clicking, for example, uh, partially received I, uh, once I click this, uh, I see only two orders, which already partially received. So uh, this is mainly all about uh, filters, as uh, uh, we, we also, uh, as all other apps has, have uh, featured to rest at all and uh, to view all the results. Uh, next part is uh, uh, change of uh, order change of uh, uh, stat status of the order depending on their receiving or payment status of the particular PO line. And uh, for example, this uh, order has only one PO line. And uh, if uh, looking into the, its uh, details, uh, also I would like to highlight that uh, one of the change uh, uh, was to, to move item details uh, as top uh, accordion section because this is uh, primarily the main information of the PO line and most useful. And we can see that uh, uh, payment status uh, here is uh, uh, partially paid and receiving status is fully received. So at the moment, uh, uh, payment status can be changed only manually, but uh, as Dennis again mentioned that we are working on invoicing application and uh, uh, when invoice is paid, it will also update status of uh, uh, some of the pure lines which uh, invoice, uh, invoices cover. So to, to emulate this, I can update uh, uh, payment status manually to fully paid. And once uh, uh, I do this, the order which I updated uh, becomes closed automatically. So this is preparation for integration with invoice and stuff. And uh, for, uh, another order which has uh, uh, also open status, it uh, has two PO lines at this time. And uh, the second PO line is already fully received and fully paid. And the first pay line is uh, uh, partially received and payment uh, here is not required. So uh, once I click receive button, uh, there is two uh, pieces uh, remaining uh, uh, to, re to be received. And uh, also uh, I would like to uh, highlight one, one more thing that we, we've done that for example, this purchase order line has uh, uh, initially was uh, uh, intended all their resources were intended to be uh, in popular region collection location once received. And uh, one of the uh, item I already received and uh, uh, now location uh, is different. So, and we can uh, review this even in inventory. That's uh, the uh, integration really works fine. Here's an instance which uh, already uh, was created for this particular uh, purchase order line. And we can see two holdings record. One is popular reading collection that uh, I mentioned each resource was intended to, to be placed here. And uh, uh, the one I received already is uh, in main library. So we can receive, fully receive uh, uh, remaining items. By clicking the receive, again, there is a, a model window we can, where we can specify barcode. And uh, uh, optional comment. Comment. So uh, let's specify some of the barcodes which are, uh, I believe, unique, and uh, uh, we can change, as I mentioned, location. And uh, just to uh, to see that uh, it really creates new holdings. Once we click receive, uh, we, uh, as usual, we go to receiving history page, and uh, all of their items now received at this step. There is no any item pending receiving, and when we go back to orders list, we can see that uh, uh, the order which we are working with is uh, actually already closed. We can see this uh, in work uh, in uh, uh, purchase order details and also in uh, uh, orders list. 
here we, we have uh, closed status of the order. This uh, was, uh, this happened because uh, uh, all the pure lines already fully received and payment status, status either uh, not required or uh, fully paid. And as a uh, last piece, I would like to highlight that when, when we go back to inventory, we can see that uh, more holding records, records created and popular reading collection now, now has uh, nothing. So basically, that's all I would wanted to demonstrate. If you have any questions, please let me know. Just one other thing to note there, and I'm not sure this came through, but we are, when, it, when that workflow status is closed, there is a reason for closure <clears throat> that's updated here as well for complete. So we're essentially specifying a reason for closure automatically there as well. Great, that was a lot of progress. It looks really good and it's really nice to see the reuse of a lot of old components, plus the introduction of new ones, like the, um, the date range filter, really cool. Um, all right, thanks Thunderjet. Um, at Cult is next with Annalisa. Hi, hi guys. Hi, I am here I, uh, today to show the cross-reference. I share my screen. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, as you know, uh, we have integrated the markup at the browse function to browse and scan the heading uh, like uh, name, subject, title. And um, to this function is associated the possibility to see the cross reference. So from, I started uh, uh, from the first panel and I choose the index uh, um, of uh, the heading that I want to browse. For example, name, I choose the criteria and I enter uh, my test. Bernard Francis uh, Oxon. And I press enter button. In the second panel, uh, the system uh, will display uh, uh, in second position uh, my uh, heading. And uh, in, in this case, I can see all authority records and bibliographic records that are associated to this heading. And uh, in, um, in this case, I can see also the cross-reference associated to Barnett Francis Olson. We have two cross-reference that are seen from. With the markup sub subgroup, we decide to display uh, only two types of cross-reference, cross like a C and C from. If I select this line, the system will display in the third panel the authority record that is associated to Barnett Francis Oxon and all the bibliographic record associated um, to this heading. And uh, if I click on one of these bibliographic records, I can see um, the details of the bibliographic record. Unfortunately, we have not a, a lot of space to see in, um, in a better way, uh, the display of a bibliographic record. We need to probably resize this type, this panel. Okay, um, closing the, the, the panel, I am able to, um, to navigate uh, this cross-reference. So if I click, for example, on this first uh, cross-reference, the system will start again uh, the browse function to display uh, the, the heading uh, Oxon Barnett Francis in the second position. This heading is introduced by an empty icon because uh, means that is a zero heading. Uh, means that is not associated to authority uh, record or bibliographic record. Selecting um, 
this uh, cross, the, 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 the browse function restart to display okay, uh, the, the time where uh, my browse function is uh, um, started. Um, so we have the possibility to uh, to browse different uh, uh, heading and see all uh, the cross reference uh, associated uh, to them. For example, another one. In this case, I have rolling JK that is uh, has uh, an authority record with all uh, um, cross reference. Selecting one of these, I restart the browse function and see in the second position the, the cross reference seen from Scamandro. Okay, that's all, folks. Uh, do you have uh, some question? Looks great. Thank you, okay. Annalisa. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> I stop to share. Okay, FoleyJet is uh, up next. Anne-Marie, Taras, Sasha, Igor. Right, so I am going to give just a really quick intro and then turn it over to the people that actually have something. Um, so in the last couple of sprints, we've been doing a ton of work on both front end and back end. Um, we are really sorry to lose Victor and Sergey and Yevgeny over to Concord because they've been doing a lot of front end work for us, but um, fine, we will soldier on without them. Um, we hit a really important thin thread milestone during this past sprint that Sasha is going to show of being able to load um, mark bibliographic records and have them create not just the stored records, but also the instances. Um, so that I think is, is the biggest highlight. We're going to start with um, Taras showing the work that we've done so far on the settings for match profiles. And um, basically the match profiles are how an incoming record in the imported file is going to match to an existing record on Folio. Um, then Sasha is going to show our new secret button to uh, the way to load mark records and the way that I broke Folio snapshot yesterday. So we are going to try not to break Folio snapshot in the future. Um, Core platform is helping us with uh, creating a, a separate environment where we can uh, do load testing and things. Um, but uh, apologies for, for slowing it down so much yesterday. And then finally, Igor is going to show some work from the back end that we've done to make it easier to load records directly into source record storage, which kind of builds on the work that Kate showed last demo. And also the first work we've done on storing the UUIDs in the MARC records. So that's a little bit of background. And now I'm going to shut up and hand it over to Taras. Hi guys, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, so um, as far as uh, we have some features already done but not deployed yet until tomorrow to any uh, of environments like snapshot or testing, I will show this on my uh, local machine. But uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, all of the stuff will be the same tomorrow on the ends, so you can check it yourself. Okay, so um, we have uh, um, finished uh, job profiles uh, and also started match profiles implementation. Uh, as you can see, match profiles uh, look um, mostly the same as any other profile uh, in the folio, but uh, from uh, it, it is different from the point of view of a match field in the list. So as you can see, this field shows us uh, uh, matching rules, uh, which are used to create uh, records. So as you can see, uh, uh, each, each uh, sub-column in this column uh, shows uh, 
first of all, record type, which will be created. Uh, then uh, after the mid dot um, incoming record from which we can take the data and existing record in, in this uh, create uh, an existing field um, in this record to be created uh, to uh, which we can put the data from incoming field. Um, as you can see, um, we have um, not uh, all the icons sufficient for this, uh, but uh, we're sure that uh, they will appear uh, during the current sprint. Uh, and then you will uh, be able to test it uh, and see it yourself with, with the, all the icons needed for this, uh, depicting the record types to be created. Uh, so this list uh, has the similar uh, has the common profile functionality. Like uh, we can pick any record uh, and see the record details, uh, including uh, associated uh, job profiles created uh, using this matching rule. Um, also, uh, we can sort the list, including the match field. Um, match field was tricky because uh, it is combined from uh, five fields. So even this uh, will not um, deny this field to be sort from being sorted. So um, you, you can sort it in the way uh, uh, the uh, original fields uh, are um, represented in the table. Um, also, we have uh, created unified action menu. Um, actually, this was the first uh, uh, try and stone of generalizing and uh, commonizing, commonal, commonizing the profile uh, itself. So now, uh, the, now Sonar is happy because uh, in this uh, chunk, um, it is common and uh, have no uh, code duplication here. Uh, it can do uh, selection and deselection of the records. Uh, and um, as you can see, uh, now it selects visible records, but you can be pretty sure that uh, it selects and deselects all the records uh, that are in the table, even if you don't see them at, uh, in a whole. Uh, also, um, we, create, uh, we created a new profile creation facility, um, so you can introduce the name and description for now. But uh, uh, when uh, when the uh, product owners team will uh, define. Uh, matching rules. Uh, we will create a details section when you can, uh, when you will be able to define the matching rules for uh, each uh, of match profile records. So as you can see now, um, newly created records lack uh, the third subfield of the match field because uh, we cannot uh, define them using any front end UI facilities. Um, also, we can edit um, any of the records. And it will be, yeah, successfully edited. Um, during the current sprint, we will um, uh, complete uh, duplicate and delete functionalities for this. Um, that's pretty all from, uh, ah, oh, uh, we can also search uh, profiles using the search uh, by the, all the fields in the list. Um, clear the search and so on. Um, so 
that's all from my side. Uh, if you can ask any questions, please ask them. I will answer them as far as I can. Thanks. Okay, doesn't sound like there are any questions on this part. Um, was it Sasha who's next for you guys? Yes, it's me. Thank yes. you. Taras, can you please stop sharing? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to do this. Oh yeah. Sasha, please proceed. Thank you. Um, so please let me know when you can see my screen. Yes. Um, today I'm going to demonstrate you a so-called secret button functionality, uh, which is a temporary decision on uh, how to allow uh, to load marked bibliographic records and it will be eliminated in future. So, uh, let me first upload uh, MRC file. Uh, when uh, we load uh, files with extension MRC or MARC, uh, the uh, drop-down menu appears uh, and it's hidden for all other file extensions. That's why we call it secret button. And uh, it contains just one uh, option. It calls load MARC bibli bibliographic records and it does what it says. So once I click it, uh, file uh, is going to be parsed uh, and uh, records uh, are going to be saved in source record storage, uh, mapped to instances and saved in mod inventory. So uh, when uh, it's in process, uh, the file will uh, appear here in Ryan section. Uh, I cannot uh, demonstrate it because the file is uh, very small and uh, it's uh, quite hard to uh, catch it here. Uh, but uh, once it is done here, uh, it uh, appears in a uh, logs uh, pane uh, on top uh, because it's sorted by ended running date. Um, here uh, we can uh, Open it. Uh, uh, open its uh, parsed uh, records, uh, which is uh, just a plain uh, JSON uh, file uh, because it's uh, temporary functionality. Uh, and uh, also, we can uh, check that uh, it appears in inventory. Uh, let me just find. Uh, Let's try by this. Uh, yeah, and uh, it appears in uh, inventory with uh, some data pre-populated like uh, uh, IDs and some other stuff. Um, so that's basically it. As I already said, it's uh, temporary and uh, will be deleted in future when all the functionality will be done. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. So this is our thin thread. This is this is a big, big milestone for us. And um, I know Sasha said it's temporary. It, it's not doing any matching or duplicate detection right now. So that's why you see the same records four times in inventory because we've loaded them the, the same file four times today um, practicing. But it gives us a way to, um, to test matching, to exercise parts of the landing page that we haven't been able to exercise yet, like the, um, the running pane and then the uh, adding to the top of the log. It gives us a chance to start to build the log, which is not very pretty yet, but at least it, it starts to um, allow us to do that. And it gives us a way to try to load 
without having to hit the back end directly, which is what Kate showed last sprint demo, and is okay if you know how to navigate, but it's not okay if you're just somebody like me who just wants to get a file in there and see what happens when I load a file. So, um, so I think this is this is a big deal for us, and I hope it's going to be useful for folks. And then the last piece is uh, Igor is going to show a little bit more that we've done on the back end to um, to clean things up and get things organized. Uh, yes. Hello. Hope I'm sharing. Hope you see my screen. Yes. Well, from my from my from my side, I can present and uh, demonstrate a functionality we made from the backend perspective, from the backend side. Uh, and there are two points I I wanted to show. I would like to show. And the first part is about uh, our custom 999 field that appears in parsed Mark bibliographic records. And uh, let's quickly repeat the same procedure Alexander described us before, but without uh, more details, I will I will use the same uh, load mark bibliographic records Alexander described us. And during the file processing, uh, the incoming records from file uh, get parsed and stored and on each parsed record will be created an inventory instance in according with default mapping. Of course, if those records were parsed and saved successfully. And uh, once a log line for uploaded file appears on logs pane, we can click on it and open up uh, log details with all the information about records of that file. And here should be 9999 field inside. Let's quickly try to find it. Yes, and here is. And if we take a look on it, there are two subfields inside 999 field. And we have S, uh, I would say S letter key that contains a record UUID. This is that record to which this field, uh, I would say belongs, because if you try to find it in this record, this is this is the record ID. And also we have we have an I letter uh, key that contains an inventory instance ID to which this record is linked. So if we copy this, uh, value we can go to inventory and try to find to found created inventory instance especially for our uh, parsed record field so I can choose instance ID and just paste uh, paste it here so here is it here is this that uh, inventory that was built and created in mode inventory, especially for our record. So uh, this uh, 999 field serves like a reference between record from file and uh, mapped instance from inventory. This is, this is that first part I wanted to demonstrate. Uh, so let's go to the next part of functionality and the second part the second part uh, I wanted to show is uh, an alternative way for uploading records in mod data import and uh, this new functionality enables uh, an internal system modules to send records or file content uh, directly to record manager for parsing without like following the strict rule of data import. I mean, going through file upload functionality, uploading files and so on. So no need to upload files uh, like beforehand. We can just send the request with file con content inside, with all the records inside, 
and uh, record manager parses it. So uh, let's use our usual uh, tool, our Postman, uh, to dive deeper in the system and trigger our new programming interface because we do not have a UI for this, uh, like a direct parsing. Uh, well, the first request uh, goes to change manager and says that we are going to parse parsed mark records uh, online. And if we send it, we, uh, the response comes with job ID. Uh, here is it. And this job ID is an ID of the job that uh, is responsible for manage for management our records parsing process. We have to copy it and paste this next request. So let's try to send a sample sample records for parsing. The second request uh, says that we want to parse this macro uh, records. So let's try to send it. Yes, we got 204 non-content non response. That means that uh, parsing process has started in background. And to finish the, the file handling, we have to send a still request uh, that confirms that we have no more records to parse and we want just to end up with handling. That's why we set the flag to true counter plus one and flush all the data from the records field. So let's check in. So let's check it on UI. And on UI, uh, a new one line uh, appeared. That means that our records were successfully parsed and imported. So if we, uh, Take a look inside. We will, of course, we will find this 999 field and uh, associated inventory instance ID for it. So, as a conclusion, I would say this new functionality enables uh, internal system backend modules to send records or file content directly for parsing. It may be uh, market application or some other application, applications or even user can trigger this functionality and put it in this way. And also, uh, I would like to emphasize that we established a rich uh, documentation in GitHub uh, that describes in more details with more examples about this like a direct records uploading procedure. So it's great. Yes. Thank you, Igor. This Thanks is great. Yes. Congratulations on your milestone, Thunderjet. Um, and now Folajet. Oh, Folajet. Folajet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and now, uh, oh, and now we need to move on to Vega with Alexander. Sorry, can you hear me? We can. Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, today I want to show you a possibility to check out item when item's loan policy is not loanable. So uh, let's start from um, checking out the loan policy. And as you can see, it's uh, non-loanable. So let's choose an user and an item. So I have prepared one. So as you can see, we can check out an item according to the non-circulating loan policy, but we can uh, do the override. Let's check, choose some date and time and add some comment. Okay, as you can see, item was checked out successfully. Uh, let's go to the loan details. 
and uh, as a result, we can see that um, action was uh, checked out through override. Uh, probably that's all from uh, this. And also I want to mention that uh, our, my team was working on tests for your calendar module and uh, currently we have reached 52% of coverage. Uh, probably that's all from my side. If you have any questions, please contact me and uh, probably I will stop sharing my screen. Thank you. All right, thank you. That was a quick one. Um, all right, so next is Core Functional with Zach and then Michal. All right. If I... This is the one I want to share. No, hold on. I gotta find the right, <laughs> the right screen share here. Hold on a minute. Uh, got too many open windows apparently. Okay. Um, so I've got a couple of things that uh, Michal actually worked on, um, but he's got about a thousand things <laughs> that he worked on. So I'm going to do a little bit of a demo. Uh, the first thing is that we now have barcode search in UI inventory. Uh, so it doesn't work uh, as part of the, the global search here, but if you click on the menu and choose barcode search, you can then see it's now possible to search by barcode. So that's been something that's a long time coming. Um, the one thing it's important to note here, many things, um, you have to enter a full barcode. So if you just enter part of a barcode, it doesn't find anything. So uh, it's an exact match search. So you got to make sure you get the whole thing in there. So barcode searching was thing number one. Um, related to that, um, if you have, uh, so an instance record that is paged, which this, uh, or which an item record rather that is paged, which this one is, it's now possible to mark a paged record as missing. Uh, previously, we had mark as missing, but it was only available for items that were in transit uh, or awaiting pickup. Uh, similarly, we have that for in process. Uh, I think I have another one of those that's in the process. Oop. I got it on a different tab here. Um, if you have uh, an item record that's in process, I'm losing track of my demos here. Um, we have the same thing. I'm trying to figure out why this is not showing what I wanted it to. All right, here we've got one that's in process. <laughs> and again, we've got mark as missing. So that was just adding the mark as missing feature to those items that had different statuses. Um, that's now available. Um, the last thing that I'm gonna demo here uh, is some bug fixes to the controlled vocabulary component. Um, the control vo vocabulary is used all over in settings, uh, for example, for different instance types. Um, you know, we use it to manage um, all those lists of controlled vocabulary. It was all kinds of messed up before. So if you were signed in as Deco admin and then signed in as a different user, you would always see Deco admin um, and the, uh, the date and the user were often incorrect. So we've got this. Um, figured out now. So I'm signed in here as uh, Mr. McTesterson. If I create a new record here, test type, it actually shows the correct record. So control vocabulary is finally fixed. So that's in much better shape. Um, that is it for me. Any questions about barcode search or controlled vocabulary? Let me know. Chalmers is going to love having barcode search. That was a biggie for them. So thank you. Yes, thanks to Michal. <laughs> he did all the work. <laughs>
And the way it works, I guess, Zach, is you, you search by barcode and it gives you the instance that contains that item. Yes, so that's true. Um, it, it, the way, yeah, exactly. Okay. The record that opens when you do a barcode search is the instance record. And then to get into the actual um, item record, you have to scroll down and, and choose the item record. Um, okay. But it does work. Nice. All right, and thank you for fixing all those bugs in the controlled vocab. Those of us who did the uh, bug fest last time are very familiar with oh, the many, many yeah, issues. Must have closed like 15 bugs. Yeah, so. <laughs> hopefully I'll take a look and make sure that we've got them all um, organized and, and all closed. All right, thanks, Zach. Okay, mm -hmm. Michal, are you ready? Uh, yes, guys, let me just share my screen here. Hopefully it works. Right, should be should be in. Um, thank you, Zach, for showing this. This was actually um, Zach actually showed me how to fix it, so it was mostly on his side, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> but yes, thank you very much. Um, I also have just a couple items, so it should be pretty quick here. Um, the fir first one is related to the check-in um, module. So um, we we have a bunch of messages um, related to check-in, and it can happen happen often that. Uh, single check-in may trigger many messages um, to the end user. And, and in the past, those were not kind of in order. It was kind of a messy situation. Sometimes they would show up and sometimes not. So let me just show you how this, this is done now. Um, I'm going to try to check in an item which, um, which has multiple, um, uh, multi multiple pieces attached to it. And I think, I believe, a note too. So let's see what happens here. When I try to... Um, Try to check in. You can see that the first model shows up here, and it, it's just a confirmation about the multi-piece. Then, if I hit check in, another um, confirmation shows up, uh, notifying us about the, the node attached to that particular item. And only after I confirm this, um, I get a model um, notifying me about the transit. And at this point, uh, the check-in process should uh, should start. So um, this was quite a quite a bit of refactoring to get those uh, models kind of in order. There's a similar work now being done on the checkout. Hopefully, we can just show that um, during the next um, next uh, review. Um, the next little thing here we added recently was um, this ability to create an overdue loan report. Um, so this should create a list of loans that are that are overdue, and um, in order to get get here you have to open um, this menu action here right on the user screen. And when you hit overdue loans report, the CSV uh, report should be, should be created with, with the users um, and the items. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, so I, I think the next, next thing here, which um, was also quite a bit of refactoring is this ability to create um, new, new requests um, for items without the barcode. So I'm here on the, uh, I'm on the inventory module with, with the item opened. And as you can see, I can hit new request and this should take me to the request uh, module. And um, this item doesn't have the barcode, but you can see there's now item ID visible on the screen and we can continue with creating a re request for this particular item uh, without without the barcode, and it should work in a similar fashion to what we what we've done before with items and and, uh, and barcodes. Um, um, in a similar fashion to that, we we also added this ability to create requests um, for items. Um, on order items and in process items. And thanks to Anne Marie who showed us recently how to create those uh, items. It's, it's, uh, it was quite a, quite a process um, for, for me at least to know. So thank you very much, Anne Marie. And again, I can uh, create a new request here uh, for, for this uh, type of, uh, for this item, this type of item, uh, which is on order in this case. Um, and as you can see, um, for, for on order items and in process items, we are able to only create um, halt or recall requests. So those um, those types are being filtered also based on the on the the status. Um, and the last little thing we added also recently is this ability to check if if the given request policy is in use. And if you try to delete it, it should um, should show you this little pop up which 
will tell you that the request policy is being used by circulation rules and you are not going to be able to delete it. So that's a little little check which should be should be a bit helpful now. And that's it from me. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, Michal. All of that work is going to be really important for Chalmers as well. Um, they're, they will be using Folio for ordering and they want to place, be able to place requests on ordered items and ordered items don't have barcodes usually. So it's kind of tying together all these request loose ends. Um, so it's really good. Thank you. And next we have um, from Core Functional, the SIP2 subgroup and Magda is going to be presenting. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. Here we go. So first question, what is SIP? Uh, SIP stan stands for Standard Interchange Protocol that defines communication between library management system and self-service circulation kiosk. Version two was released in 2006 and is widely adopted by library automation vendors. Folio SIP2 service implementation has been developed by Matt Reno and Martin Tran, and it currently supports uh, check-in and check-out functionality. At this point, we work with Biblioteca, which is a vendor of the self-service kiosk used in Chalmers University of Technology. And we are working on setting up and securing communication between kiosk and our service. For the demo uh, purposes, I will be using um, SIP testing tool that was originally developed by Central Library Consortium. However, once we started uh, using it, uh, there were a few issues and Martin Tran stepped up and added functionality that will not only help in our demo, but also contributed to troubleshooting. Let me show you the tool. Here we go. Um, we will be uh, pointing on the client side, we will be using this tool that is connected to a service running in Chalmers uh, for in for Chalmers. Let me switch to Folio and I will show then let me go back. Excuse me for a moment. Let's make sure we are connected. And in the meantime, we go to Folio. I'm running it in the Chalmers environment and I have created a test um, patron, Robert Lewandowski, that is student. And as we see um, at this point, he doesn't have any open loans, uh, a few closed loans. Um, Robert will be checking out in our demo a book that is um, Boston Architecture with uh, barcode that, that is available and this is the barcode we are going to use in our demo. Going back to the tool. So at this point point we will be simulating logging into the station uh, to the kiosk and this is what we'll see uh, the expanded response uh, once the, the patron is logged we will be checking the status of the automated circulation system which in our case is folio as we see the um, folio is online um, we see the status is yes on in addition, we see um, other uh, configuration so that we can do the check-in and check-out and also currently supported messages that uh, Folio provides. Um, as you see, there are quite of them. Now we are ready to check out the information. This is the uh, check, up, check out the, the book. Uh, this is the pattern barcode and the item barcode is right there. 
So let's check it out. The line in red is, is the message the kiosk sends to the um, to Folio to uh, to SIP service. The line in uh, blue is the response that we are getting, and what is below is our parsing that allows us to determine that uh, it's uh, to help read the response. So as we see that the checkout uh, function was uh, successful and we indeed uh, checked out Boston architecture. Let's go back to uh, our pattern. And eventually we will see. Here we go. We have uh, one uh, open loan. Now let's go back to the kiosk and check in the item. Again, we see that the response was uh, successful. Uh, the the check-in was successful. Let's go back to the patron uh, record. Um, there are no open loans. Hold on, let me refresh. It looks like the closed loan button is not working for some reason. So let's go the, to the inventory and check the inventory status, uh, the status of the item. Hopefully this will be working. And if we click the copy, Let me, sorry. Uh, it, it looks like, like you were in the holding record. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I obviously tested it and it was, uh, um, hold on, maybe we will have more luck with um, pattern like record. So we see the number, oh, here we go. So this is the list of, um, closed uh, record and let's sort it. Boston architecture, architecture was just um, returned. This is it, what I had for the demo. If you have any questions, please let me know. Very exciting, Magda. Oh, we, I think uh, we will be really excited when once we start uh, using the real hardware. I'm sure, <laughs> yeah, we, but still this looks good. We were able to run the checkout from the kiosk in Chalmers in the bug, the bug mod mode where um, we were controlling the barcode that we are providing. Tomorrow we are meeting with Biblioteca again to uh, finish the uh, securing of the connection and hopefully uh, we will be able to conduct um, a little bit more testing with the real hardware, hardware during the backfest. Nice. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Magda. Okay, and that um, concludes the demos. And now we have an update from Anton on, on QA. Well, everyone, let me share my screen.
Um, okay, share. Here we go. Uh, can you can you see it? Yep. Okay. Here it in present mode. So as usual, updates are um, available at the quality dashboard. Link is provided. So please see if you're interested, see what's going on at the dashboard. Now the, okay. So uh, we are running the bug fest as we speak. And this is the screenshot from uh, this morning. We are using test rail now. We're not running off the Google spreadsheet. We are actually using an application that uh, allows us better management, better tracking, better visibility. So this is like a quick report from, uh, from that application. We are 14% through, uh, through and we are planning to finish uh, on Thursday. So, so far we have uh, 11, uh, 11 defects and what we don't want to see are P2 defects. So far we have one active uh, and at the rate that we're going, we you guys probably can expect total of about 50 to 60 defects uh, filed. Um, so, but uh, th uh, this is the uh, screenshot from the another dashboard that is publicly available. It's called Bugfest Q2.1. It's also it's available in Jira. So um, I don't know. I don't think you need to check there often, but all the data is available there as well. So uh, the product management team and I will be triaging defects and as they come in and pushing them into the teams. So you will be notified relatively soon about them. It's not gonna be hidden somewhere in the chest. So the other thing that I would like you to be aware is that our trend, so this is a uh, 30 day trend. So we used to be closing more defects that we're opening, but right now we are at the parity, so we are one to one. We close as many as we open. Uh, so it means that our capacity for closing defects is limited. And uh, I hope that as you wind down on the features, uh, then the next uh, two or three sprints before Q2 release will be spent on the bug fixing. And uh, this is what I would like you to be aware. We have. Uh, 38 P2 defects and three P1 defects that we hoped that will be fixed by the end of uh, this release. So this is um, this is data from the uh, dashboard that is available in and open pu publicly open to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, to everyone in uh, in Jira. So you can go and check that dashboard um, as well. There is a, a link from the uh, from the folio um, QA dashboard on the wiki. There is a link to this dashboard. But be aware that you will be asked to uh, somehow to prioritize and fix uh, fix those defects and see it's all broken down by team. So you can see how much in trouble you are. Um, and then another thing that, um, uh, hold on, let me get back to, um, to the browser mode. Uh, I would like to show you the work that's been happening. Uh, I think uh, you could uh, touch, uh, uh, touched on it a little bit, but it ju um, the reason why I want to talk about it, that will affect you all in the future and it's actually work this work is done by request from multiple uh, st stakeholders so there was uh, developers requests product owner requests and actually customers and in particular sysops um, staff of our customers requests so uh, 
we will uh, we're working on the multi-tenant system that we'll use for our development loop where you will be allowed to interact with the product owner and deploy your modules without um, without the need to commit them to the snapshot so uh, or to the master so it means that by the time code hit the master branch and the snapshot release is being built it's much more solid than we have it now because we've merged first and then troubleshoot later so the change will be that you will iterate and troubleshoot first and then merge merge second and by the time you merge you should be executing all your unit tests integration tests uh, acceptance tests pretty much any every everything before you before you merge to master the sum names on this uh, diagram is off because it's work in process so in particular this release branch is actually a master branch so the naming is off a little but the whole idea is that every team will have uh, one or more tenants on the system that will run in AWS and you will use those tenants to deploy your changes and verify them before before you can merge to master so you'll be isolate your changes before you hit the common code base so we are making good uh, good progress and uh, my hope is that that would become a part of our process at the um, uh, sometime in Q3. I hope the sooner the better, so hopefully we can start Q3 development cycles using this, but if we're not able to finish sometime in the Q3, we will be definitely uh, take a full advantage of, um, of this rancher based system so rancher is a, a kubernetes cluster management um, open source uh, program that allows you to manage multiple uh, kubernetes uh, kubernetes cluster just makes it much easier than uh, managing kubernetes uh, directly so um, and that's pretty much um all I have at the moment. Are there any questions? I guess not. Thank you, Anton. Okay. So let's just pick up the deck here. Um, so we have our next two sprints are two week sprints per usual <clears throat> with lots of release activities happening towards the end there. Um, oh, plans for coming sprints. So each of the teams has entered the plans for their coming sprints. So if you're interested in what people are planning to work on, come take a look. And that is actually that is all we had today are there any questions or anything else anybody wanted to use this last bit of time for we've got five minutes all right great thank you so much to everyone who presented and um, i will share the uh recording shortly